where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Today we're talking about Jesus' claim to be life. When God made man, he formed him out of the dirt. But he wasn't alive until God breathed into him. But the moment he sinned, death came in the world and spread to all people because all of us sin. When we're born into this world, we are born into sin. As Paul put it in Ephesians, we are dead in our sin. Essentially, our spirit is dead, unresponsive to God, and there's nothing we can do about it. Only God himself can bring us to life. When we were studying Jesus' miracles in Sunday school, my husband made a comment that all of Jesus' physical miracles pointed to a greater spiritual truth about him. I never had thought of it before, but when he made blind men see, he was also claiming that he was there to open the eyes of those who were spiritually blind so they could see him for who he really was, God, and they could see themselves for who they really were, sinners in need of salvation. When he healed diseases and other physical problems, he was showing his power to take away the biggest disease, sin, and heal broken, wounded people. And when he raised the dead, he was proving that he also could take those who were dead in sin and make them spiritually alive. At the raising of Lazarus, he explained this to Martha when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The moment we believe and place our faith in Jesus, we die to sin, but we are made alive in spirit. Colossians 2.13 says, And you, being dead in your trespasses, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Jesus said, Whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Romans 5 explains that through one man, Adam, sin and therefore death entered the world and reigned until Jesus came along and conquered death so that he could give us eternal life. His sacrificial death and resurrection made the way for us to have eternal life. Not just life after we die in heaven with him, but it's a life that makes us truly alive here and now. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Abundant life, that's what Jesus is all about. So what is abundant life? For one thing, it's freedom from sin, from those strongholds the devil once had in your life. Pure freedom. It's also fullness, a completeness not found in anything else the world has to offer. Not in success, not in relationships, not in wealth. Nothing else truly satisfies or gives joy except him. Abundant life is a life of purpose, joy, and peace. It's the kind of life that can't be devastated by circumstances. It's a life full of surprises, exceedingly, abundantly more than we could ask or think. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And that goes both for here on earth and in heaven. Not that everything in our life will be easy or even safe, but with Jesus by our side, in any situation, we can have a full and joyful life because that's who he is. That's what he came to give us. Do you have eternal, abundant life? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to share a treasure God has given you by doing an episode, please contact us. You can listen to other episodes on our website, 
which you'll find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Thank you.